This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Uh-oh, looks like Tesla has more trouble in China. Sales plummeted 27% last month compared to March. China's Passenger Car Association reported that Tesla sold 25,845 cars in April. As we know, Tesla has come under heavy criticism in China from government authorities, though it's unclear if that led to the drop in sales. Meanwhile, Chinese automakers like Xpeng and BYD reported record sales of battery electric vehicles. Recycling the batteries in electric cars is a big issue. If those batteries can't be fully recycled in high volume, they're going to end up in landfills, and that means BEVs wouldn't really be all that good for the environment. So General Motors just announced an agreement with the Canadian company Lycycle to recycle 100% of the materials in its batteries. That includes cobalt, nickel, lithium, graphite, copper, manganese, and aluminum. GM says 95% of those materials can go back into making new batteries. Lycycle says its hydrometallurgical process emits 30% less greenhouse gases than traditional recycling methods. And if you'd like to learn more about Lycycle, check out the AutoLine This Week television show, number 2428, we did with the CEO and founder of the company. The Gordon Murray Group, the company created by famed automotive designer Gordon Murray, is expanding its business. It's investing 300 million pounds, or more than $424 million over the next five years, in R&D to reduce weight and complexity in both vehicle architectures and manufacturing. It's creating a new unit that will focus on developing electrified powertrains for global automakers and technology companies. And it's currently working on a lightweight EV platform for urban passenger vehicles and delivery vans. But Gordon Murray says it's not abandoning internal combustion engine vehicles completely, and will continue to develop V12-powered vehicles, quote, as long as the regulations allow. One of those, the T50 supercar, is scheduled to come out early next year, and Gordon Murray says its ethos will influence all of its future models. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But will always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Subaru announced it's naming its upcoming all-electric SUV the Solterra. The name is a combination of the Latin words for sun and earth. It was jointly developed with Toyota and is built on Subaru's new electric platform, which of course includes the automaker's all-wheel drive technology. The Solterra goes on sale next year in the U.S., Canada, China, Europe, and Japan. And in related news, Ford confirmed the name of the upcoming electric F-150 will be the F-150 Lightning. And I'm sure many of you fondly remember the original F-150 Lightning. But the new truck goes into production next spring at the automaker's new Rouge Electric Vehicle Center. That's about all we know for now, but we'll learn more when Ford unveils it next week at its world headquarters in Dearborn, Michigan. And speaking of pickups... Auto Forecast Solutions says Tesla's Cybertruck will go into production in March of 2022. It will be built at Tesla's new plant in Texas called the Terra Factory. Auto Forecast also reports that the next generation Ram 1500 is not coming out until January of 2027. It will continue to be built at the Sterling Heights assembly plant north of Detroit. That's a huge plant if you didn't know. It's 5 million square feet and employs 7,800 people. Two years ago, Harley-Davidson launched its all-electric motorcycle, the Livewire. Now the company is spinning Livewire off into a separate electric bike brand. It will work with participating dealers from Harley's network as an independent brand. 
and Livewire will operate dedicated EV showrooms in select locations, starting in California. The first Livewire-branded motorcycle will be unveiled in July. And just like an automaker or supplier, this is all about separating itself from the old polluting brand and unlocking more shareholder value. Porsche is looking to improve its navigation system. It says using GPS data alone can determine the location of a vehicle within 2 to 10 meters or 6.5 to 32 feet. But that's not precise enough if you wanted to say know the exact lane the vehicle is traveling in. So with the help of NVIDIA's graphics processing units, Porsche created a new system that uses AI to get a more accurate location from GPS data. It says this would make it possible to do things like identify the ideal line to take on a racetrack. But no word yet on when we could see a system like this in action. Not long ago, we talked about how Mercedes was giving its customers the ability to pay for gas right from their car. Well, now it's doing the same thing for its commercial truck division. It successfully completed tasks that allow specially equipped Actros trucks to automatically pay for fuel at Shell service stations in Germany. They feature a digital ID and fuel payment card that are embedded right into the truck, so the station knows the exact truck that's filling up and can charge it accordingly. Mercedes says it will continue to develop the system and hopes to offer it in a range of connected services for its customers. Say, can you name the best-selling hybrid in the American market? I bet you can't. And it may shock you to learn which one it is. It's not the Toyota Prius or the Toyota RAV4 or Highlander. And it's not the Honda CRV or Ford Escape Hybrid either. Nope, it's the Toyota Sienna minivan. A key reason is that starting with the 2021 model year, the Sienna minivan only comes as a hybrid. It's rated at 36 miles to the gallon, which is excellent because even though we call them minivans, there's nothing mini about them. I think a reason why it's the best-selling hybrid is that it doesn't have styling or badges that scream out that it is a hybrid. Toyota just sells it as a minivan that happens to get really good fuel economy. Seems to be working. So far this year, it's outselling all the other minivans. What are the most anticipated new cars, trucks, crossovers, and SUVs for 2021? That's going to be the topic on AutoLine After Hours on Thursday. Even though not every new model has been introduced yet, we know what they are, and we'll let you know what's on the way. So join John and Gary for a deep dive into a review of what's new for 2021. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, Intrepid Control Systems, Over the Air Engineering, Boost Your Game, Scheffler, We Pioneer Motion, and by Magna.